of angel now sing glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth to all the destitute crying to him starvation to all the destitute hope he brings and resurrects Christmas the Savior has come Christmas a babe in a stable Lying in straw in a manger Jesus the Lord now is born High up in the skies above The voices of angels have sung Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. In this Eucharistic celebration, let us pray in a special way. This Mass is offered for 43rd wedding anniversary of Mulayamma parents for good health and thanking God for all the graces received by four daughters. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My dear friends in Jesus Christ, today we celebrate the feast of St. John the Apostle the evangelizer and the great scholar and preacher of the gospel. This feast today invites us to see the incarnation of God was indeed true. Through his gospel writings, he proves that the Son of Man came into this world. The Word was become flesh and dwelt among us. As we have celebrated the Christmas and the Holy Family feast, and today, this feast, in a way, brings us to reflect and see that God is with us. And we, as a baptized Catholics, are called to for the holiness, and also we are called to be an apostle and evangelizers. Now, for a while, let us pass for a while and see, are we worthy to be called apostles and evangelizers? If not so, let us feel sorry for our sins and ask God's pardon and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us together joyfully glorify the Lord.
blessed apostle john have unblocked for us the secrets of your word grant we pray that we may grasp with proper understanding what he has so marvelously brought to our ears through our lord jesus christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god forever and ever amen that which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you first reading a reading from the first letter of saint john chapter 1 verses 1 to 4 a reading from the first letter of saint john chapter 1 verses 1 to 4 beloved that which was from the beginning which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes and which we looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the world of life the life was made manifest and we have seen it and testify to it and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the father and was made manifest to us that which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you so that you too may have fellowship with us and indeed our fellowship is with the father and with his son jesus christ and we are re- re- writing these things so that our joy may be complete the word of the lord thanks be to god your response shall be rejoice in the lord you just rejoice in the lord you just the lord is king let earth rejoice let the many islands be glad cloud and darkness surround him justice and right are the foundation of his throne your response rejoice in the lord you just rejoice in the lord you just the mountains melt like wax before the face of the lord before the face of the lord of all the earth the skies proclaim his justice and people see his glory your response rejoice in the lord you just rejoice in the lord you just
chapter 20 verses 2 to 8. On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene ran and went to Simeon Peter and other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going towards the tomb. Both of them were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen clothes lying there, but he did not go in. The Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen clothes lying there, and that face cloth which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen clothes, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends in Jesus Christ, Today, as we celebrate the feast of St. John the Apostle, he is a very beloved disciple of Jesus Christ. Uh, mainly, the three titles that we can reflect on this feast day is, he is an apostle, and he is an evangelizer, and he is an, a beloved disciple. So, these three titles are very peculiar to St. John, because as he was chosen by Jesus Christ, he was sent out on a mission that is very meaning that he is an apostle. So, apostle means one who is sent out on a mission. So, as a disciple, he was at the master and learned all the things what the master has taught him. And he became apostle when he was sent out on a mission. Then the second thing that we honor him with the title is, is a great evangelizer. So, his prime duty to evangelize the good news. So, as Jesus Christ, through the birth of Jesus Christ, the great good news came into this world. The shepherds were rejoicing that you, when the angel came to Mother Mary and the shepherds, the angel said, I have brought you the good news. That same good news has to be when we experienced, then we need to share with the others. That is the prime duty that John has chosen to evangelize the good news that he has experienced. As we heard in the readings, what I have experienced, what I have heard and what I have seen, I am sharing with you so that it may bring the complete joy to you all. So that is the great mission that he has taken. That is why we see he has written five writings. One is the gospel and three letters of St. John and the book of Revelation. So, these, through these readings, he is in a way was able to proclaim the good news. Evangelizer means one who is called to proclaim the good news. That duty he has fulfilled in his life. And the third title that we have for John is the beloved of the Lord. So, he was the angest in the disciples that Jesus has chosen and he is always a beloved disciple. That it is we have seen in the gospel reading that he is always he did not mention his name, but he is always said one who was reclining to Jesus. So at the last supper, he was reclining to the Jesus in order to inquire about who is the traitor. And also we have seen that in the gospel reading again it is mentioned one whom whom God has loved. So this title in a way shows us and reveals that Jesus was in a way, is very in favor and in love with John who is engaged. So, the traditions and the scripture scholars says and the lifestyle of St. John is in a way edifying that thing that we need to reflect and see in our day to day life. So, St. John in a way through his gospel reading apart from the other gospels though he is a highly theologically person and he was able to show that the world when there is a time 
that Jesus is not a real human and he is a son of God. That is why he was able to bear this pain and he was able to resurrect. So this heresy when it is there, he in a way foreseen this heresy in his life and he told this is the word that become flesh. So in the beginning of the John's gospel we find the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So that is the reason we celebrate this feast at this time. So soon after Christmas, why do we celebrate the feast of St. John the, John the Apostle is in order to prove to the world who is born in this world is the Savior. It is the word of God with whom with the, it is present in the beginning of the creation and that become a flesh and it is Jesus Christ himself. So he is in a way proving to the world and proclaiming to the world that John, uh, Jesus is the son of God, the savior of the world who came into this world. So my dear friends, this John who was chosen by Jesus Christ is also, as we said, is a beloved disciple. So there are so many occasions that we can see in the gospels. The first occasion, he was present always with Jesus Christ. From the beginning when he was called, the first time when he experienced Jesus is maybe when John the Baptist showed, Behold the Lamb of God, when he proclaimed that time Andrew and John have followed Jesus Christ. And also John was called by Jesus himself when he was fishing and he left everything along with his brother Andrew and James and Peter. So along with them he also followed Jesus Christ. So that moment onwards till the death of Jesus Christ he was present with Jesus. That shows that he has experienced great love of Jesus and that experience of love have led him to commit himself to follow Jesus Christ throughout his life. That is the reason he is able to stand at the feet of the cross. So all the other disciples have run away when Jesus was caught, arrested by the soldiers. But it is John who is there till the end. He was standing at the feet of the cross and to him Jesus presents, Behold your mother and behold to Mary he presents John as behold your son. This privilege he had because of the experience that he had with Jesus. So in a way he is also present in some other occasions where Jesus privately spent and only he has chosen three disciples. Among them John is always present. At the rising of Jairus' daughter and the transfiguration and the, at the Gethsemane. So in these three occasions, John was present with Jesus. That shows that he is the beloved of the Lord. So today as we are reflecting on this feast and the readings that we have is, what is that implied to me? What I have to do with this message of God? So my dear friends, in the Christmas we have experienced the presence of Lord. So he is born in our hearts. And that presence of God has to be shared with others. What I have experienced, I need to share with others. Through my baptism, I am called to be an apostle. I am called to be an evangelizer. I am called to be a beloved disciple of Jesus Christ. That is the great call each one of us. Not only the chosen priest and religious, it also to every one of you it implies. So every baptized person in a way is given a call to be an apostle in order to do the mission of God and to be an evangelizer to proclaim the good news of God and to be the beloved of Jesus Christ in order to experience the love of Jesus and to share with others. As we celebrate this Eucharistic celebration, let us ask the Lord to give us this heart of courage to stand for his faith and to stand and proclaim the good news that the Savior is born into our world in order to bring us the salvation. Let us also have the courage of heart to commit ourselves to be an apostles and disciples in order to continue the mission that is entrusted to us.
let us close our eyes and pray lord our loving father and we thank you and praise you for the gift of all the bishop pope bishops and priest whom you have chosen to be your apostles and disciples in order to proclaim the good news guide them with your spirit and lead them to do your work in a courageous manner for this we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer lord we pray for all the management of divya vani tv channel and all those who work in this channel they may experience the good health and loving care and protection and they may be always protected by your grace and your gift for this we pray lord hear our prayer lord we thank you for the gift of your son jesus who brought us the good news into this world especially as the world is suffering with this corona and with the pandemic situation bless all the families especially who are become victims of this corona virus they may experience the graciousness of god and the unconditional love of god in their lives for this we pray lord hear our prayer in silence of our hearts let us also put forth our personal intentions the lord who loves us unconditionally whatever we ask in his name he is ready to answer all our prayers we make this prayer through christ our lord amen As we stand at the table, you said, "Yours as we eat the bread of us can forget. We are the signs of your life with us yet. We are yours. We are yours. Take our bread." We ask you take our hearts we love you take our lives oh father we are yours we are yours your holy people stand wall in your blood spirit fill yet and grave with our with your food. Oh, though we are, we have brought ourselves to you. We are yours. We are yours. Take our bread. We ask you take our hearts. We love you. Take our lives. Oh, Father, we are yours. We are yours. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and our good of all His holy church. Sanctify these offerings we have made, O Lord. We pray, and grant that from the banquet of this supper we may draw the hidden wisdom of the eternal world, just as from this same source. You reveal to your apostle John through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, 
Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on the feast of this half-filled mystery, through invisible in His own divine nature, He has appeared visibly in ours, and begotten before all ages. He has begun to exist in time, so that rising up in Himself all that has caused down. He might restore unity to all creation and all staring humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we proclaim. This is the time that the Holy Spirit transforms this ordinary bread and wine into body and blood of Christ. So let us prayerfully, faithfully partake in this Eucharistic celebration. Ask the Lord to transform our hearts in order to experience the presence and love of Jesus Christ. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and he entered willingly into his passion, he took the bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
in similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me the mystery of faith save us o savior of the world for by your cross and resurrection you have saved us free Therefore as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you Lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the holy spirit remember lord your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Paul Anthony our Archbishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages in special way saint john who has pleased you through his evangelization we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your son jesus christ through him and with him and in him O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command formed by the divine teaching, let us dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold the Saviour of the world. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us and is inviting us to be His beloved disciples. 
Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Prayer of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I decide to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come into my heart spiritually. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself to you wholly. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Apostle John, may through this mystery which we have celebrated ever dwell among us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us bow our heads for the final blessing. May God, who has granted you to stand firm on apostolic foundations, Graciously bless you through the glorious merits of the Holy Apostle John. Amen. And may he who endured you with the teachings and example of the Apostles make you under their protection, witness to the truth before all. Amen. So that through the intercession of the Apostles, you may inherit the eternal homeland, for by their teaching he possess firmness of faith. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go and proclaim the good news to the world. Thanks be to God.
Okay. 